Good morning, folks. Couple filaments at the limbs, both incoming and departing. Snarling is the word I use to describe their motion, but in terms of an eruption threat, I'm seeing a decreasing risk here. We've got space weather to discuss, earthquake information the observers have been tracking, an article about methane from three weeks ago that the world seemed unwilling to promote, had to dig it out, also got the South American winter forecast, weather alerts in the United States, and more, including a test today for the Earth facing quiet. But we come first to spaceweathernews.com, and we're seeing that the last day on our star was mostly calm, with the top feature being a sunspot surge just north of center and departing seen as a buildup of flashing nano flares. We did get one small sea flare this morning, came from that grouping surging over the last day. Certainly nothing major, especially with no CME and tiny umbras, but it will be interesting to see if he comes into his own after leaving the Earth's side. Solar wind impacted Earth with the second coronal hole stream last night. It was not major, but it was enough, two in a row, to set instability in the global magnetic field with Karuna registering level 2 events on their K and Q indices. Top quakes of the last day were moderate to slightly above average, but the most notable was a rare location rumble in the middle of the South Pacific, intraplate, away from major faults. Remember folks, we should be getting a break here from the larger quakes, but the next coronal hole is on the equator, so it'll just be a couple days, and both Saturn and Venus want to line up with us in the sun here at the start of June. Top news starts here. Turns out that all the methane releases reported as horrifying atmospheric climate change harbingers from the Arctic are not making it to the atmosphere. Solidification and imprisonment in Davy Jones Locker is their fate. Then this, folks, after the Wilcox Solar Observatory released another line of polar fields data, we are now up over a 99.9% .9 confidence interval that the March 2nd 7.8 magnitude that struck Indonesia occurred on the day of a negative total SPF peak, a half-year peak at least. Furthermore, it is now becoming clear that the South Field spike in red just five weeks later triggered the deadly Japan and Ecuador rumbles of April. We watched, saw the pattern, professionals verified it mathematically, and now we have instance after instance of confirmation that the sun triggers the worst earthquakes. Lastly on the link list is this, South American winter forecast, getting chilly in the south as things warm up in the north. This is found at AccuWeather, and it's not such good news for southern Chile and northeastern Brazil. Top current weather stories in the United States. Top Earth spot on the planet is still Bonnie, even at remnant status, pushing major rains at the coastline today, but by tonight we'll have our eyes back in the center of the country. Powerful low could bring more tornadoes and severe weather to the middle of the nation as the sun goes down. Folks, be sure to check out our free resources. We'll list them at the end of this video and below in the link list. And of course, supporting those resources, the morning news, and everything else we do is the work at suspiciousobservers.org. Just a reminder, I'll be speaking next month at Electric Universe 2016 in Phoenix. Check out thunderbolts.info for that one. And we are just about 11 months to a year away, folks, observing the frontier, the third conference of the observers coming to Albuquerque, New Mexico in 2017. We've got pressure and radar, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 3.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.